Welcome to another S&P 500 analysis. Today is January 15, 2023. So far, the month of January is still positive for the S&P 500, and the January effect is still intact. In this video, we'll look at the market sentiment, the market internals, the price action of the indexes and the ETS, such as the SPY, QQQ, and the IWM, and see what the market is telling us. Stay tuned. Looking at this weekly chart of the S&P 500, as you can see, the range for the week was 127 points, and it gained a, a little bit over 104 points or 2.67%. See that it is continuing this one time framing up, came back up and test this declining trend line here, and also it closed above the 10 week and also the 40 week moving average. And in addition to that, it printed a bullish weekly candle and close near the high of the week. But it still remains in this lower low, lower high pattern. I'm gonna show you later on that there is a good possibility it could come up and break this pivot high. All right, let's take a look at the uh, sentiment and also market internals. Looking at this sentiment chart here, you can see that the VIX is uh, below 20 and actually uh, close at 18.35 uh, or so on Friday. Also, the put call ratio is back below 1, although it is still about 0.75. So obviously, the market participants are getting a little bit more complacent, but they are not completely formal bullish yet because the put call ratio is still between this 1 and 0.75 zone. And looking at the up-down volume ratio, the Friday rally or the Friday's performance was kind of mediocre. It was only about 1.5 to 1 in favor of the up volume and the uh, advance decline. There were uh, 754 more advancing issue than declining issue on Friday. And the new high, new low in the New York Stock Exchange, there were 103 more new 52 week high than 52 week low. And notice that only 7 stock make new 52 week low on Friday versus 110 stock make 52 week high. And here looking at this New York Stock Exchange cumulative AD line, as you can see, this AD line is quite strong and also have taken out this uh, pivot high here. And notice that the S&P 500, it is still below this pivot high. So there's a good chance because we are seeing a positive divergence between the cumulative AD line and the uh, S&P 500. You can see that the S&P 500 could come up and take out this high to resolve this positive divergence. So we have to keep an eye on this to see how we're gonna resolve this positive divergence. And here looking at the NASDAQ market, the NASDAQ market also had a positive day on Friday and the up-down volume ratio was only a 1.5 to one in favor of the up volume. And there were 1,266 more advancing issue than declining issue on Friday. And here in the NASDAQ market, the new 52-week high also outnumbered the new 52-week low. On Friday, there were 111 more new 52-week low. I mean, there were 111 more of new 52-week high than 52-week low. Only 19 stock made 52-week low versus 130 of them made new 52-week high. And looking at the NASDAQ cumulative AD line, we also see it uh, performing quite strongly as well. And notice that it also took out this pivot high here. And the NASDAQ 100 is still below this pivot high. So just like the S&P 500, wouldn't be surprised to see the NASDAQ 100 come up and take out this closing high here to resolve this positive divergence. So overall, the market participants are getting a little bit more complacent and also getting a little bit bullish, but not formal bullish because the put call ratio is still above that 0.75 threshold. But the advanced decline and also the uh, new high, new low is getting more positive. So it seems like this rally that we've been seeing is still have a little bit more to go. Let's go and take a look at the uh, index itself and see what the price action is telling us. Let's take a look at the index C, starting off with the S&P 500. As you can see on S&P 500, Last week, it came up to this trend line here and also came up to this upper range of the weekly expected move. Originally, I was looking for a red candle for it to form an evening star type of pattern and look for a retracement back down to this lower trend line. As you can see, it did not happen. Instead, it uh, printed a uh, bullish candle 
and move right up to the upper trend line here. So for the coming week, I will be looking at the possibility of breaking this trend line. Remember I said earlier from the AD line, we saw a positive divergence between the accumulative AD line and the S&P 500. And the uh, likelihood is for it to come up and break this pivot high here. This right here is uh, just a touch above 4100. So we're basically looking at 4100 here. Now let's take a look at what the uh, next week the uh, expected move and the uh, upper range expected move the weekly expected move is uh, between 4070 and 4058 and for the lower range is between 3940 and 3920 i kind of rounded off so uh, it just makes it easy and so basically i'm looking for the price to possibly you know break this trend line and move up into the zone here and tag this upper range of the weekly expected move. Now we could see a pullback, and if we do, we most likely see it come down to this 39.40 area, then look for a bounce back up, because I'm still looking at this area here to uh, get tagged. So I am looking at a more upside. Uh, I doubt that we will get down here in the coming week. And also with the uh, earning coming out, for the financial uh, continue to come out next week, most likely we are just continue to chop and move up until we get the uh, large cap tech stocks such as Apple, Tesla, Amazon. When those uh, company report, then we might see a, a little bit of a surprise reaction on the downside. And here looking at the NASDAQ 100, we see that the NASDAQ 100 also got a nice bounce off this zone and came up to the upper range of the weekly expected move. In addition to that, it also broke this consolidation area and moved 1x of that major move. So you see that it came up here and it just tagged that uh, you know, upper range, the lower edge of the upper range. And right now it is above that and into this zone. So let's take a look at what next week's the uh, expected move will be. And here are the expected moves somewhere around 11,800, between 11,780 and 11,730, somewhere around there. And also uh, the lower range is between 11,320 and 11,250. So as you can see, what I'd be uh, looking for is a move, continuation move to come up to this trend line and eventually it will break and come up and take out this high. And that would be above this 12,200 area, near this 12,200 area. Remember when we look at the market internal, the NASDAQ market, the advanced decline line is also showing a positive divergence between the uh, uh, you know, NASDAQ 100 index here. So I'm looking for the resolution of the positive divergence by taking out this high. So we could see this market continue to chop and move up higher. Now, of course, we could see a pullback, and if we do, then we're basically looking for a pullback to come down to this lower zone and then get a bounce back up. So that's what I'd be looking for for the coming week on the NASDAQ 100. And looking at the Russell 2000, as you can see, Russell 2000 was quite strong last week as well. And here's the uh, zone up here that I'm looking at, uh, looking for this to come up to this zone before it uh, hits some resistance and possibly come back down. Now. If it doesn't move up, uh, you know, continue to move up to this zone, instead it pulls back, then I'd be looking for it to come back and do a little bit back test of this trend line and then get a bounce back up into this, uh, this zone here in the uh, 1900 above 1905 and 1925. And for the Dow Jones Transportation, we see that it broke above this point of conf confluence and right now it broke out of this trend line here and it got an inside bar so we could see a little bit of a pullback bounce on this zone here and then push up to the next zone and at least get up to this area somewhere around 14,800 then probably encounter resistance and bounce around before it push up to this 14,975 on the upside but on the downside we probably are looking at a little bit of a pullback into this zone and maybe come down and test this trend line here and get a bounce back up. 
And for the Dow Jones Industrial, we see the Dow Jones Industrial Denomination move here and it's basically has, you know, trace out 100% of this major move. So right now, I'm basically still looking for a continuation upside move toward this 35,500. Now on the downside is that it could come down and possibly do a little bit back test at this level near 35,500 and then see another push back up. But the overall momentum is on the upside. And finally, looking at the New York Stock Exchange Composite Index, it's quite strong here and it came up and broke uh, just slightly above this zone here. And one could also uh, make a uh, case that this could be an inverted uh, head and shoulder. But here's what I'm looking at, just do a symmetry move here. And if I take this, uh, get this extension to and just use this measure move to for the symmetry move. Here's the 80% uh, area here. Uh, and the 80% is pretty close to 16 or 17,000, 16,900. And the 100% uh, measure move is uh, close to 17,450. So again, we could look at the possibility of this thing come up maybe chop around and then start pushing up and at least uh, take out this level of resistance in targeting these pivot high here as potential upside target. Now, if it pulls back, we could see a little bit of a pullback into this zone here, somewhere around 15,600 area, and it could even possibly get down into this area here, you know, for a back test or possibly this trend line for support and then pushes back up. Now let's take a look at the ETF for the indexes. The first one we're going to take a look at is SPY. And as you can see, uh, the SPY came up to this trend line here and bumping up against it. So if it breaks through and get up above this 400 level, then look for a move up to this uh, 410 area. Now the upper range for the uh, coming week is between 4450 and 4420. So it's a very tight range for the upper range. And for the uh, lower range, it is between 392.60 and 390.30. So on the upside, we're basically looking for this 40450 to get tagged and possibly push up to the uh, 410 area and take out these uh, pivot high here to resolve the positive divergence between the cumulative AD line and the S&P 500. Now, if we see a pullback, then look for this lower range to get tagged and possibly chop around and might even come down to this 390 area and back test this zone here, this uh, breakout level here from this consolidation zone. And that would be around that 390 area. And for the QQQ, the ETF for the NASDAQ 100, looking for this thing to continue to push up here to this upper range for the coming week. And that range is between 287 and 286. So that basically uh, come up to this trend line. Remember uh, earlier, we also saw the positive divergence between the cumulative AD line, the NASDAQ 100, and that's the, uh, you know, this pivot high that we're looking at to, for it to possibly come up and resolve that uh, positive divergence. Now, we might not see that uh, happen next week, but we could see it in the, you know, following week, maybe, uh, you know, the uh, tech like Tesla and, some other uh, large cap tech uh, reporting earning that could uh, provide the catalyst to push it up to this level here. And this level is somewhere around, let's see what this high here, it is somewhere around 296.88. So basically could look at possibility of this round number here of 300. So that would be the upside is to uh, come up and tag this upper range and also this uh, trend line here. For the downside scenario is come back down to this lower range and possibly chop around and also back test this breakout area here near the uh, 270 area. And here looking at the IWM, the Russell 2000 ETF, you can see that it broke above this zone here, this 187 zone, and we can see a little bit chop and then for the upside uh, coming uh, week, could be uh, making its move up toward this upper range of the weekly move that is between 191.20 and 190.60. And that would also take out these uh, pivot high here near the uh, 190 area. 
Now for the downside, it could come back down and backtest this zone here, this uh, lower range between 183.50 and 182.10, and then see would it get a bounce back up. Or if it come down, then we'd be uh, looking at the possibility of backtesting this 176, 177 area. Now let's take a look at the ES, the E mini S&P 500 future. See that right now it's sitting somewhere near this uh, 4,015 here, right up this zone here, and above this composite volume uh, profile point of control. So for the coming week, I'd be watching for this upper range to get tagged if it breaks this uh, trend line here. And this upper range is between 4,087.50 and 4,076.50, 78.50. And the lower range is between 39.59.50 and 39.35. So those are the two ranges that I'd be uh, keeping an eye on. For the upside, we could see that uh, possibility of coming up to this 4,100 level. And for the downside, I'd be watching for it to come back down and tag this lower range near this uh, 39.35 area here and see would it be able to hold and get a push back in back inside of this balance area because we have a balance area here and we could see it uh, come up to the upper end of this balance area or break down from this balance area and try to come back and back test this area here and if it doesn't hold this 3900 and we could see price to come back into this lower balance area. And looking at this uh, market profile chart for the ES, you see that right now it formed a day two day balance area from the last couple of trading sessions. So we're basically looking for this thing to break out of this balance and move up into this naked point of control here, somewhere around 4,076.25. We we'll look to see would it be able to get up here and then also resolve the single print, and that would be up at the uh, 4110 area, and that would get up to that 4100. Now, if it uh, break down from this uh, two-day balance on the downside, then we are looking at the single print to get filled and possibly push down to this 392075, this naked point of control here, and see would it be able to hold. If it doesn't, and if it comes down to this area here, then we are looking at the possibility for the ES to come back into this lower balance area here. Now let's take a look at the US dollar. As you can see, the US dollar is kind of uh, broken down from this uh, 103, 104 area. And right now it's down at this 102. So the next level to uh, keep an eye on would be this uh, 10130 area. So we'll see what it be able to find support here and get it bounced back up. And if it does bounce off from the current uh, price level, then look for a potential resistance up near this 103.80 area. And looking at the 10-year yield, we see that the 10-year yield is coming down and uh, getting close to this 3.4, sitting at 3.5 uh, as of Friday. So we wouldn't be surprised to see it dip down to this 3.4 and if it does then look for the possibility of move down to this 3.167 before it headed back up because the uh, Fed has not completed its uh, rate hike policy yet. And if we look at the yield between the 10 and the 2, we see there is an inversion here and it is uh, 73 basis point right now. So that means the, uh, the 2 is higher than the uh, 10. And that kind of signaling that there is a recession coming. And looking at the 10 and the 5, we see the inversion of 10 basis point. Looking at cool oil, cool oil actually came back up and it seemed like it is coming up to this trend line here and possibly get back above this zone above the 8276 area. Now, one could also make a case that it is forming an inverted uh, head and shoulder. And if we do a little bit of a major move here, we could actually uh, get a little bit of a projection of where that might lead us. And here it is uh, with the 100% major move is somewhere around 92.88. So round it off to 93. And at 80% is about 90 and a half. So we could see oil coming back up to the 90 if it could break above this 82, 80, 83 area, this zone here. 
And for silver, we saw silver holding above this uh, 20, uh, near this 24 area here. And right now it's trying to break out above this uh, 2470. And if we could get up this uh, 2470 area, then look for a possible move up to the uh, 26. And we see gold broke above this 1920 level last week. And right now, basically looking for this continuation move up toward this 1960. Now we could see a little bit of a pullback and possibly get below this. Uh, they'll come back down to this 1900 area and possibly test that 1900 before another push up to this 1960. So in summary, the market seems to be a little bit on a bullish side right now. And also from this cumulative AD line, it should indicate the uh, S&P 500 have a little bit higher territory to go before it uh, pull back uh, or reverse itself. And uh, the uh, level that we are watching is this uh, pivot high here near the uh, 4080 area. And the S&P 500 has been up for four consecutive sessions, and one would think that a pullback is, uh, is imminent. Well, that could be the case, and if it does, it's uh, probably will just probably pull back to this 3900 level and get a push up because right now the uh, price action seems to be indicating that it wants to uh, break this trend line and move up to near this 4100. So we'll see, but definitely right now the tone in the market seems to be leaning a little bit more on the upside, and also the internal seems to be indicating that the uh, the strength is coming back into the market, at least in the near term. So I hope you find this video to be informative, and be sure to smash that thumbs up to help me promote this video. Thank you for watching, and stay safe.